Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and it's been a little bit of time since we gave you kind of a tour of the Fro factory, but what I want to do in this video is give you a tour of the sets that we use and the gear that we're using on the sets because the last time we did this, I believe we were still using some Nikon Z6s for most of our cameras, but let's step into the main studio right here. This is really technically my office. Let me close the door so Steven can't get in. Steven, you can't get in, the door is closed. We still don't have a door. We, we've been here for six years and we still don't have a door. Anyway, this is the main shooting area. If you look over here, Steven, so this over here is a set that we use. It's not really set up right now, but we use this for the user guide videos. We use it for doing B-roll. When Steven is shooting video of different new cameras that come out, he's setting up on the ground over here and he's using the Canon R5 with all different types of lenses, including the new macro 100 millimeter because that's perfect for uh, doing the B-roll of what he needs. Now, this is my desk set. This is something that we set up so I could make videos at my desk by myself because in the past, I couldn't make videos very easily by myself. Honestly, when I first started in my backyard at my dad's house with a D3S, I had to, I had to set up the camera, I had to pre-focus on a mannequin, and then I had to hit record, then sit down and hope nothing changes. I couldn't move. But we got new technology today, which makes this a hell of a lot easier for me to shoot on my own. This is a Canon R5. We've got a 51.2 on it. We're shooting between 1.2 and 1.4, and we trust the lock on IAF to track me when I'm sitting in my chair, which is awesome because I could do it all myself without having to do anything else. So basically, I can sit down here. Normally, the, the lights wouldn't be on, so what I wanna do is I'm, I'm gonna clap and then the lights are gonna go off. Now there we go, that looks a lot better the way we have it now. This is the lighting setup that we use. We have Kino flows, we've got aperture lights on the background, but the main focus here is the Canon R5 and that 51.2. We love shooting wide open or close to wide open and being able to trust that the IAF is going to find me. Now normally we wouldn't have an Atomos recorder on doing this, but I wanted to step up into the set so that you could watch, oops, Something fell in the background and that scared me. So uh, I wanted to have the Atomos recorder on so that you could see the IAF moving because I turned to my computer, I turned back to me, and that way it's always going to find my eye. Now, I may wave a bunch. Sometimes I do that to just be like, hey, look at me, I'm over here, I'm over here. That way to make it, you know, because I can't see the screen when I'm doing this, but I trust it that it's going to hit me every single time so I don't have to worry about it. The one time, that it slipped, it wasn't even the camera's fault. The camera was so good that it picked up an eye behind me in a, on one of my photo books on the shelf, and we realized that it was happening, and we're like, oh, we better move that book to the bottom shelf so that the IAF doesn't pick it up. But this is one of the main sets that I use for just obviously making reviews and critiques and previews. It's a really good set. So next, we're gonna move on over to one of our setup sets. I usually sneak through here to get onto this set. This we consider a scripted set. And that's why we switch over to this microphone right here. This is a boom mic. It's so that I can honestly wear my tighter shirts. Uh, I like wearing tighter shirts, but also the boom mic sounds much better when I'm doing scripted things. Speaking of scripted, Steven, can you run the script? Because right now this is a teleprompter from prompter people and we put the script up here so that I can attempt to read it. And usually I do a pretty good job, unless I make a video about them to teach others. For clarification, I define a keeper as the best of the best with honors, sir, image. So basically the text is what, 138 point text, Stephen? It's the largest we can make it and still have a couple of words on the teleprompter so that it can, uh, so that I can read it. All right, we're good there. But what the reason I wanted to show you that is because Stephen just got the teleprompter in there, but the camera that you're looking at right now is the R5, which lens? We got a 51.2 on that, Stephen? Yep. Yeah, we got a 51.2 on that at 1.2 because we're so close to the background, we want to get 
as shallow of a depth of field as possible. And that's why we use the 51.2. Now, what's interesting about this set is that we have multiple cameras set up that we run. We've got one down here on a slider, which is generally uh, an R6 with an adapted 24 millimeter, which reminds me, I, I thought we had an extra adapter and that's where it is. So I need to take that with me from time to time. But we have an old 24 EF on there because it's a little smaller and it doesn't get in the way when it's when it's sliding. It, it actually doesn't show up in the other camera angles. Up here, we've got an R6 right now, but generally we put an R5 on here with an 85 1.2 to give another tight shot. And that way we have three different cameras running at all times and you know, the Kino flows have the are set up here, and we really rely on using the technology inside of the R5 to allow us to do these scripted videos, make them look great, and even shooting through this glass of the teleprompter, make it work out. So this is a cool set because it's where I can articulate the words that I wrote down and hit every single point that I wanna hit because I wrote it. And that way, it just it just comes off really well. So this is one of the cooler sets that we have, uh, but it's time to take a walk to show you the other sets that we have downstairs because we have at least three more in one other studio. So Steven, let's, let's go ahead and take a, a walkie Mick Walkerson and head on downstairs. All right, so this, this is a pretty major studio for us because we have multiple sets that we can do here. If you see the floor, you'll see all different color tape. Now, the tape is for putting different, uh, where the light stands go. Our blue tape right here is marked out so that we can pull the counter all the way out so that we can have our store set set up. And what's great about that is we have two cameras that are already set on location for the store set. We've got two R5s back there. One has an 85 1.2 on it. The other has an adapted 70 to 200 2.8 right now because I like to take the 70 to 200 RF out into the real world. And that's why we have that one there so that I don't have to worry about taking mine off. I mean, technically it's not mine, but taking it off when I wanna go shoot. So that's one set right here. But if you see the orange tape, this orange tape is for that bowling alley desk that has wheels on it. It's an old uh, flat file. And we use this for when we do different comparisons, like the R3 versus R5 versus R6. We do that here anytime we have anything to show. And what's cool about that is we can do double duty on the set that Steven is, is blocking right now, because we use this for fix, which we're gonna show you in just a minute. But we use this camera set up here right through it's probably focused on me because the technology is so darn good that it finds me. And then we put up a second camera that's usually a little tighter. Now, what I didn't tell you is that Steven is shooting with an R5 right now with a 15 to 35 2.8 RF on there. So we have the entire lineup and we utilize it to the full extent. It's just cool that Steven can walk around, follow me with the autofocus, have the stabilization, and it just works out really well. But this, this is a really cool set. Steven, can you hit the lights for me? Steven's gonna hit the lights, and this is our photo news set. Sometimes, and by sometimes, nobody would ever know this, that I wave, only people that know this are Steven and Dan, that I'll wave my hands just to make sure that it finds me, the fro guy, and I stand here with the teleprompter on when I do fix, and this is where I say, Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is your Photo news fix. Well, that's more of the ending or the beginning. I don't know. But I do this myself. All throughout the pandemic, I came in here for the first time ever to film myself. Usually Dan or Steven was here to run the camera, to make sure that it auto-focused on me. When we used to use the Nikon, uh, we used a D5 in here for a long time. And so it was, I needed someone here to focus on me. Now I don't need to worry about it. We have an R5 back here. We have the 28 to 70 F2 set to F2 because we want to compress the background as much as possible. There's so many people that think that this is a, a green screen behind me and it's not, it's real. This is all real, it's gritty and it just looks really good uh, with this. Oh, and it's also great that like I usually walk backwards sometimes. If I do something and I want to jump around, the camera's going to follow me and keep it all in focus. So this 
is a really cool set. We got the different Kino Flow lights set up. We have all the different tape on the ground to make sure that everything looks good. And I come down here and I film by myself. And that's what's so good about using the R5s and the R6 and the RF lenses is that I can do this myself and not have to worry that it's going to miss because just about every single time, it's gonna be spot on. So this has basically been a technology tour of our different sets. And this is a set we really haven't utilized just yet. We've made a video here, but this is gonna be really cool when we decide what to do with it. But we have so many different places to use here at the factory and using the Canon RF system, using the Canon R cameras has been great for us. We love the quality of what we get. Sometimes we even shoot it in 8K just so we can punch in a little more if we need to. We actually did that recently with the cam video for the uh, where we gave him all of that Apple gear. We shot it in 8K so that we could punch in and do a bunch of different things because Steven was on the fly with that. So yeah, any questions that you have, leave them down below. But as you can tell, we've got a lot of sets in kind of a pretty small area, and we utilize the R5s, the R6s, all of the RF glass, and even adapt some of the EF glass, and it works perfect for us, especially when Steven can fly with the camera and the focus just stays right where it needs to be. So that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.